All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Neeson, and I am the supervisor in our Tax Operations Bureau that handles the processing of the sales and withholding returns. Good morning, my name is Kim Searles, and I am the lead worker in withholding tax. All right, and also joining us to answer your questions in the chat will be Mike Udy, the Business Tax Section Chief, along with Jordan Dietrich from our Customer Service Bureau. You can raise any questions you might have in the chat at any time, and we'll do our best to answer them in a timely fashion, and then circle back at the end of the webinar if there's anything we need to cover openly. Within a few days after this webinar, a recording will be posted on our training page so you can refer back to it, or you can refer to others if you find that it could be useful. We'll also be presenting this webinar again on December 15th of this year and January 1st, or I'm sorry, January 5th of 2020, and which will cover the same information, but if any new information comes up between now and then, that will be included in those future webinars as well. Our contact info is going to be on the final slide of this presentation, and there's also a PDF handout provided that you can use to follow along if you like. We're going to review a number of topics about the Wisconsin withholding tax forms, which are the WT-6 and the WT-7. We're gonna go over how to file these forms, as well as how to file the W-2s and the 1099s that should be submitted along with form WT-7. We'll review my tax account, our free online filing system, and give you some tips on how to avoid some penalties and interest. Because above all, we wanna help you avoid that as much as possible. And we're going to briefly go over how to close an account and other resources that are available for you. So first, let's go over the employer responsibilities. So as an employer, you are required to withhold if you are paying wages to a Wisconsin resident, regardless of where those services are being performed, or if you pay a non-resident for services performed in Wisconsin, and you as the employer are engaged in, licensed to, or transact business under Wisconsin law. For example, let's say you're an employer engaged in business here in Madison, Wisconsin. You hire two employees. One is a Wisconsin resident and one is a resident of, an out of, state, of another state. Both employees are performing services in Madison. So as the employer, you would be required to withhold taxes from their payroll and report that tax to the Department of Revenue. There's also reciprocity agreements that could impact W-2 preparation. You wanna visit our website and search W-2 preparation guidance for more information on that subject. Now listed here are the common withholding returns. So the WT-6 is commonly used to submit withholding tax throughout the year. This WT-6 is basically a payment with return characteristics. The due dates of this return depend on your filing frequency, which we are going to cover uh, in the future slides. The WT-7, that's an annual reconciliation of tax withheld throughout the year. It should also include any wage statements you issued. The due date for this return is always January 31st of the following year, unless it lands on a weekend, then it would be due the very next business day. Filing frequencies are set by state statute. Depending on how much tax you are reporting, your frequency may change. Each year we conduct an annual scan and review the tax that each entity has remitted over the last 12 month period. These scans run every November, so the 12 month look back ends on October 31st. If you ever need to verify the filing frequency of an entity, you can do so by going to our website at the link provided here and enter the necessary information of the entity. You'll need the ID, meaning Wisconsin tax account number, the federal employer identification number or social security number, as well as the business last name and zip code. As a side note, if you already have access to the entity through my tax account, you can easily view their frequency by logging in and looking. As I mentioned earlier, the filing frequencies are set by state statute and are determined by your annual liability that gets reported. 
annual filers are only required to file a WT-7. They are not required to file WT-6. Listed here is the breakdown of the different filing frequencies. As you can see, the more liability you report, the more fre frequently you will need to file. The due dates of the returns are due by the end of the following month. The only exception to this is semi-monthly filers. Since those returns are due twice a month, the due dates are more frequent. For example, the filing period of January 1st through January 15th has a due date of January 31st, and the filing period of January 16th through January 31st has a due date of February 15th. So basically, the return is due by the end of the next filing period. If you have any questions, you can always contact us. Okay, the Department of Revenue has had an e-filing mandate for a few years now. This mandate is currently in place for all filers except those on an annual filing frequency. That being said, we do highly recommend that annual filers submit their returns electronically as well, because doing so would decrease possible errors that come with paper filing, and it also helps quicken the processing of your returns. So the easiest way to abide by this mandate when filing a WT-6 return is to file your returns through one of the options listed here. First, we have our online filing system called My Tax Account, otherwise referred to as MTA. Next, you have the option to submit your return through an approved XML software transmission. This is an option we offer employers so they can send an electronic funds transfer through our secure internet portal. And finally, we do have a telefile option for those of you that don't have computer access but have access to a landline. This is a way you can file your return using a touchtone phone. This would be a, this is an automated system and it would go through the return line by line and do any calculations necessary for you as you go. Now, as previously stated, the mandate to file electronically is in place for all filers except those on an annual filing frequency. At this time, we are still accepting paper WT-7 forms for annual filers. But again, we do highly recommend you file electronically to avoid any processing errors. And similar to the WT-6 forms, the WT-7, that annual filing frequency, or that annual reconciliation that's due at the end of the year, can be filed through my tax account, again, MTA, through our XML submission, or through the telefile. So both forms can be submitted through those ways. When you file the WT-7, you must also submit copies of the W-2s and 1099s that were issued. You'd want to include all W-2s reportable to Wisconsin, because those must be submitted as well. You would also need to report any 1099s that have Wisconsin withholding. You may have 1099s that you need to submit, but they don't have any Wisconsin withholding. Those 1099s can be left out of the count on that WT-7 return since no tax is being reported. For example, if you have five 1099s that you issued, but only three of them include Wisconsin withholding, then the number of 1099s you would report on that annual reconciliation, the WT-7, would be three. However, you would still submit copies of all five. So again, only those including Wisconsin withholding need to be included on account for the WT-7. Here are a few WT-7 filing tips. These first two I just mentioned on the previous slide, but still wanted to include them on this list of tips. Indicate all W-2s reportable to Wisconsin. Only 1099s reporting Wisconsin withholding should be indicated. 1099 NECs should be reported on line two of the WT-7. These are a fairly new uh, return and can sometimes be reported on the wrong line. Also be sure to check your ACH information periodically if paying electronically. Often entities change banks and may not notify their preparer or payroll provider. As a result, the balance remains due and penalties and interest can be assessed as well as return check fees in some cases. So it's a good idea to verify this information to prevent these payment errors from happening. 
When it comes to W-2s and 1099s, they can be submitted through XML, my tax account, or through our EFW-2 upload. Paper wage statements are accepted only if sending fewer than 10 W-2s or 1099s. This includes W-2Cs as well. For example, if you have seven W-2s and seven 1099s, you can submit them by paper because you have less than 10 W-2s and less than 10 1099s. However, we still highly recommend that you file them electronically as this would be a faster way to get them processed and cause less issues such as illegible copies or torn paper that causes a section to be missing. Annual WT7 returns and all wage statements are due by January 31st of the following year. Again, if this day falls on a weekend, they would be due the next business day. This is an important factor to consider because even though the deadline to file is January 31st, you can submit the return at any time. You do not have to wait until the last possible day to file. In fact, we highly recommend you file as soon as possible to assure your information is properly received and processed. If the W-2s or 1099s are not filed, there is a $10 wage penalty assessed for each wage statement not filed. This penalty will also be assessed for wage statements filed late or by paper that total 10 or more. To give you an example of all of this, let's say a business files a WT-7 on a timely basis and they report 10 W-2s. If they file the return on my tax account and manually key in the W-2s, there is no penalty assessed because the W-2s were submitted electronically with the return. Now, if the return is filed timely, but they do not submit the W-2s, a $10 penalty will be assessed for each W-2 adding up to a $100 penalty. And if the return, excuse me, and if they file the return timely and send the W-2s in by paper, they will still be assessed the $100 penalty because you can only submit W-2s by paper if you have less than 10. All right, so here is a sample of the 2021 W-2. This is what the 2021 W-2 will look like. Next, we have a sample of the 1099 MISC or 1099 MISC, also a 2021. Here we have a sample of the 1099 NEC for 2021. And now for some W-2 and 1099 filing tips, these are very important. You wanna make sure that you list a valid 15 digit Wisconsin tax account number, which is required in box 15 of the W-2 or box 16 of the 1099 MISC or box six of the 1099 NEC. So the 15 digit Wisconsin tax account number, that Wisconsin tax account number will always start with 036, just to give you a good idea. Now for 1099s only, you wanna use your withholding Wisconsin tax account number, even if your account has been ceased, if it's not active. That account number will help the 1099s get associated to your account without any delay. Now, if you have no withholding account ever, you've never had one in the past, that's when you would use the generic Wisconsin tax account number of 036 and then 10 eighths and 01. However, we do offer a free submission of wage statements on my tax account, which we'll go over in a few minutes. We no longer accept the PDF files created through the Social Security website. Some my tax account filing tips. If you log into your my tax account, which has been updated recently, what you want to do is you want to click on more. And then 
under the W-2 1099 submissions, you'll see a link titled Enter W-2 1099 Information. You can see that on this slide. So once we click on the more, which would be the far right of the bar at the top, it take you to this screen and that bottom right box, that's where you'd see the enter W-2 1099 information. This is an option to enter your wage or information returns as a standalone submission, meaning you're not filing a WT-7 return with them. This could be because you've already filed the WT-7 or you may not have a requirement to file the return but need to submit info returns. Remember that situation where we talked about the 1099s, you may not have Wisconsin withholding to report, but you still wanna submit the 1099. This could be that option for you. Also, you wanna be sure to check your ACH info periodically, if paying electronically. Often entities change banks and may not have notified their preparer or payroll provider. And as a result, the balance remains due and penalties and interest can be assessed. Oh, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I just moved along the wrong part here. So once you click on the enter W2 slash 1099 information, thank you for correcting me, Kim. You're gonna follow those steps to submit your information. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna start out asking for the tax year and if you are entering corrected W-2s or 1099s. Then for example, if you enter tax year 2021 and click next, you will come to this next picture here. You'll notice it's asking for W-2 info first. Entering the information return follows the same lines as the WT-7 return, meaning it starts out asking for the W-2 information, which you can do by clicking on the add W-2 link circled here on this slide. Then once you're done entering the W-2s, or if you don't have any W-2s to enter, click the next button, which is also circled here at the bottom right, to move on to 1099s. Then you'll simply repeat until you get to the end of all your information returns that have been entered. When entering W-2s, make sure you put the correct social security number for the individual. There is a lot of checking going on in the background and if that information is not correct, it can certainly delay things and cause issues and penalties as well. Once you are done entering all information, it will display a summary page for you to review. Once you confirm and submit, you will receive a confirmation number. To file your WT-7, go to your withholding account within My Tax Account. It will default to the Periods tab, which you can see at the top of this picture. In order to file your WT-7, click on the File WT-7 Return link for the appropriate tax year. As you can see in this example, there is no File WT-7 Return link next to the period January 1st of 2020 because that return has already been filed, but there is a link next to January 1st, 2021. Once you click on File WT-7 Return, this will be the first screen you see. It first asks if you have any W-2s or 1099s to submit. If you have any W-2s or 1099s to report, even if they are getting submitted by another format like file transfer, you will still need to answer this as yes. Once you click yes, it will ask you how you intend to submit the information, which will be my tax account, file transfer, or by paper, if applicable. Then click next and follow the instructions to complete the rest of the WT-7 return. When completed, you'll receive a confirmation number. All right, the WT-6 is those can be filed at any time as long as you submit at least one within each filing period by the due date. 
It is possible to file multiple WT6 returns within a filing period. There is no limit. You simply click on file WT6 return right next to that period. Pictured here is the same picture used in that previous slide when showing you where to find the WT7. You'll see both the WT6 and the WT7 returns are now located on the same page. This was part of our recent update. Once you click on file WT6 return, it will bring you to this screen. It's gonna start asking if you're filing zero. If you are, you click next, you click, you click yes next to that question and then click next down below to get your confirmation number. If you have an amount to report, enter the amount in that required space. Lastly, it will ask if you wanna make a payment. If you are not making your payment, click no, and then click next to get your confirmation number. If you are making a payment, the box is already defaulted to yes, so you simply click next. At the next screen, you'll enter your payment method along with any banking information needed. Then you'll get your confirmation number after you submit that payment. Something to keep in mind, you are required to file a return even if you have no liability to report. As long as you have an active withholding account, you have to file at least one WT6 for each period. Now I do want to point out the notes at the bottom of the screen. I understand it may be a little bit small for you, so hopefully you're able to, to zoom in a little. But the notes on the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there is a time deadline. So in order for the return to be timely, if you're waiting till the, the, uh, the deadline date, then you'd wanna authorize that payment before 4 p.m. Central Time in order for it to be considered timely. If you submit it after four o'clock, it would not get processed till the following day and it could be late. That's one of the reasons we like to tell you that once you have your information ready, feel free to submit it as soon as possible. There's also the next note there is if you have fraud protection with your bank, there is a uh, originator number that you would want to provide to your bank to let them know that this payment is okay to be processed. And then the final note down there at the bottom just indicates that payments cannot be funded by any financial institutions outside of the United States. To view a summary of your filing history, we go back to the withholding page on My Tax Account. The system automatically defaults to the period tab in My Tax Account, like the picture we displayed in a previous slide. So you will need to click on the Returns tab to view old submissions. See red circle here in the, the picture displayed. As listed here, you can see returns that need to be filed as well as returns that can be viewed or amended. For example, if you look at the September 2021 20, period, it is listed twice. This is because there has been a return filed, which is why you can see view or amend return. And since you can file multiple WT6 returns within one period, that is why a file now link is still available. If you need to amend, you can always amend the return down. If you need to report more, you can simply file another WT6. Since you are able to submit as many WT6 returns as you wish, there is no need to amend a return up. For example, if you are a monthly filing frequency, but you want to submit a WT6 for each weekly payroll you issue, you can file a WT6 each week instead of waiting until the end of the month to file the entire amount. Just be sure you are selecting the correct pay period. Common mistakes we see when businesses report wage attachments as withholding tax, which is a collection action within our Compliance Bureau. Wage attachments should not be reported on a WT-6 or the WT-7. There is another area within my tax account where you would take care of any wage attachments you have to report. Another common mistake we see is when businesses report the federal withholding or Department of Workforce Development unemployment as Wisconsin state withholding. 
Neither of these should be reported to Wisconsin on the withholding tax returns. This one is not necessarily a mistake, but can delay the processing of your WT-7. If you submit your December WT-6 payment on the same day you submit your WT-7, it could delay the processing of your WT-7. The reason for this is because the WT-6 payment needs to clear your financial institution before it would apply to your account. Although this is not a requirement, we highly recommend submitting the final WT-6 as soon as possible or before you submit the WT-7. One of our goals is to make filing tax and paying as simple and fair as possible. We want you to file and pay on time to avoid any late filing fees. As I mentioned earlier, the WT-7 is a reconciliation of what you have reported throughout the year on your WT-6 returns. If the WT-7 doesn't match what has been reported throughout the year, meaning you underreported tax on your WT-6 returns, then an incomplete or incorrect return penalty may be assessed. Again, be sure to submit all your W-2s or 1099s with your WT-7 to avoid that $10 penalty for each missing W-2 or 1099. If you do not file a required return, the Department of Revenue will assess an estimate, estimate and send out a notice of estimated tax. So it is important that you file the return, which is the best way to take care of an estimate. As for the filing frequency process, we do verify filing frequencies annually. It's a 12 month look back. We see the amount of withholding due within the year and what category you fall into. We would send you a letter in November letting you know what your filing free, what your new filing frequency will be. And that new frequency would then take place January 1st of the next year. That current process is going on right now. Like I said, it happens in November. You wanna make sure that you communicate this to your payroll service provider so that the software can be updated with your new filing frequency. Now, when closing a business, you'll need to make sure you file your WT-6 returns through that end date. You should also issue W-2s to your employees. And you'll need to file your final WT-7 return to the Department of Revenue within 30 days of your inactivation date. So not at the end of the year, not January 31st. If you close prior to the end of the year, that final WT-7 return would be due within 30 days of that inactivation date. If that final WT-7 return is not filed, then an estimate would be assessed. If you need to inactivate your account, you can contact us and let us know you are closing, or you can inactivate your account on my tax account. You just simply go into your withholding account and click on the uh, close account link. There is a webinar for the annual My Tax Account Filers, which you can find on our website at www.revenue.wi.gov, like government. And there are also videos on the My Tax Account pages to assist you in filing and paying your taxes. We also have publications available on our website, which are listed here. The common ones for withholding tax would likely be the publication 166, and publication 117. Once again, my name is Kelly Neeson, and here is my contact information if you have any questions. We hope this has clarified a number of things for you, but we'll be here to answer any questions you may have. Just enter your question within the chat. And if you have any specific account questions, you can also contact our customer service bureau. I provided their email and their phone number here as well. All right, thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great day.